Well, welcome. I'm uh, excited to present my vision about how wearable technology can improve medicine. <laughs> wow, my heart is incredibly high, actually. <laughs> but the thing to note is, it's interesting information, but is it actionable? Do I change a behavior, a medication, or a therapy as a result of that information? So you look here, this is a, a picture of many wearables. So I want to ask a question. How many people have used a wearable device? Raise your hand. And then how many have had that device influence a medication or a treatment today? Any hands? There's a few. Not very many. Therein lies the opportunity for wearable technology to have a profound influence on healthcare. So to describe this journey, I want to start by explaining what I view as the macro of healthcare. It's reactive healthcare. As stated earlier, people get sick and they're treated. In large part, healthcare has been a turnstile business. But if you think about it from the perspective of an individual with a chronic disease, they're trying to navigate their healthcare highway. But they don't have a lot of information. In many ways, it's like driving a car blind. So they go forward and they bump in to the healthcare system and have to be taken care of. It's reactive in its nature. It'd be like driving a car and you only change direction when you hear the gravel or you hit the guardrail. What's transpiring now with the Affordable Care Act is proactive health care. There's a desire to keep people well, to focus on prevention and decrease cost. Think about that now from the perspective of driving that car. You're now given the feedback to drive that car down the road, to keep it on the road. Let me use a car analogy. Many of us drove here with cars that prevent us from colliding with other cars or changing lanes. We're all aware that autonomous vehicles are going to come. That's a technology-enabled car. What I want to do is share my excitement for the technology-enabled patient, where we enable the patient to navigate their healthcare highway effectively. What it starts with is engagement. Technology can facilitate engagement of me, my medical provider, and my caregiver, my spouse, my children, my friends. So I'm going to serve as your tour guide as we walk through the technology-enabled patient. I think I'm qualified. I have a bachelor's and master's from Stanford, went to medical school. I've worked in the wearable technology space for five years. And I've served on Presbyterian's board of directors. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on two organs, the heart and the lung, and specifically heart disease and asthma. Big medical expenses. So what you see here is Mr. Richard Hunt. He has heart disease, but he's not in the hospital. He's in his home. He's sleeping. He's reading a book, he's drinking coffee. But that entire time, his heart function is being monitored. You may notice he has a ring on. That ring looks a lot like this ring. What it's doing is it is measuring his pulse contour, his activity level, and it's communicating that information real time to his medical provider, assessing how his heart is doing. So what can Mr. Hunt do with that? When he's drinking coffee, he could say, Hey Siri, how's my heart? Richard, it is good to hear from you today. Your heart is doing well, but we have sensed a bit of a negative trend. Your data and a notification has been sent to Dr. Mitchell, and his office will be contacting you today. Please make sure to take the medications prescribed and follow the recommended diet. Wow, he knows what's going on. Now what he can do is he can say, well, I wonder what's really going on. He pulls out his phone. Now he's got a portal. And it allows him to know exactly what's going on with his heart, how much it's changed. He can look at the trend that's occurring. 
He can also examine other characteristics. He can uh, hit that button and say, I'd like to see my doctor today. He can check on his medications, make sure that he's taking the correct ones. And he can enter his symptoms so the care provider knows exactly what's going on. He has shortness of breath. He's coughing and he's having trouble sleeping. But we're also talking about technology engagement here. So what's happening here is his daughter, Lynn, also knows what's going on. She's engaged now in his care. She can see what's transpiring. She can look at the alerts, and she can nudge Dad. Dad, are you taking your meds? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you exercising? What's going on? The result is profound. We're now helping Richard. We're doing it proactively. On the care provider side, what you have is a dashboard. This dashboard integrates information, as shown here, across a hundred people. But it allows the healthcare community to focus resources on those six individuals that are having difficulty, that are beginning to show negative trends, that have reported symptoms, that are reaching out. And instead of seeing them at the emergency room or the urgent care, you're now working with that person proactively in their home, making sure they have their medications, that they're taking them correctly, that they're uh, in the best possible condition. And if they need to be seen, you're not doing it at 2 o'clock at night. You're doing it during the middle of the day. This can have a profound influence on healthcare's, how health care is delivered. It focuses resources, facilitates engagement, and changes it to a proactive situation. I want to transition. I said I'm going to talk about asthma. Asthma is an interesting disease. If you don't know much about it, uh, usually most patients have two inhalers. One's a medical inhaler, and the other is for treating symptoms, a rescue inhaler. Um, also, environmental conditions influence when people get asthma attacks. So if you now think about a kind of a different type of wearable technology, this is a wearable technology worn by the inhaler. And what it does is it communicates what medication is taken by the patient, when it's taken, and which one. So you have a situation where a patient hasn't been taking any of their medications, but is using a bunch of rescue inhalers. Sounds like a bad situation to me. But what's very interesting is this company has now integrated geospatial information. They're providing the patient now with information on temperature, humidity, pollen count, the air quality, that patient now can say, wow, those situations have caused me to have difficulties before. And you can also create a portal. Same example, a dashboard to facilitate care of this individual. So you're now focusing resources. One of the things that happens with asthma, patients get confused on which medication to be using. You can now work with them proactively. Now you may say, all this sounds great, Reese. But does it really work? Has anybody shown this happens? Here's some data from this asthma activity. And I recognize it may be a little bit hard to read. But they have demonstrated a 100% reduction in hospital visits, hospitalizations. A 60% reduction in ER visits. And they have a 30% increase in clinic visits. So what they've done is instead of having people spend time in the hospital, they're now seeing them in the clinic. So if you take that patient perspective, you'd say, that sounds great. Sounds great to me. I'm not in the hospital. I may go visit. I'm working with somebody to keep myself well. So if you now take this activity in its ensemble, what you have is wearable technology providing important medical information and wireless technology creating the avenue by which that information is integrated for me to use, for your physician to use, and for your family to use. The net result is a profound improvement in healthcare. It's delivered at lower cost. Patients uh, enjoy a better life. And I see this transpiring. I'm excited to be involved with it. So I hope I have shared my view of how exciting healthcare can be with the integration of the empowered patient through wearable technology. Thank you.